Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to be talking about Red Dwarfs. And more specifically, we'll talk about the life stages, the progression of Red Dwarfs, and uh, how they change through their lifetime. Today you're going to learn a little bit more about the most common type of a star in our galaxy, and hopefully you enjoy the video. Welcome to What The Math. So by now you should probably know that uh, Red Dwarf is basically a type of a star that is the most common star right here in our galaxy and most likely in the entire universe. Uh, the estimates for how many Red Dwarfs there are vary between about 75% of all of the stars to about 90% of all of the stars in our galaxy. So in other words, if I were, if I were to randomly accidentally land on a planet somewhere in our galaxy, there's a very, very, very high chance that I would land on a planet orbiting a red dwarf. But at the same time, red dwarfs are also very special stars because basically they are the longest living stars in the universe. Uh, the uh, sort of average age for a typical red dwarf is one trillion years. That's literally like a hundred times longer than our own sun. In other words, when the galaxy and the universe is very, very old, you won't really see any other stars except for, of course, red dwarfs. So in this video, I actually wanted to show you the four typical stages of red dwarfs um, as they progress from basically baby red dwarf to grandpa red dwarf. And we're going to use a universe sandbox to try to visualize all of this. It's actually a pretty simple concept. And I wanted to use this particular star, the most famous of all red dwarfs, and also basically the closest star to us, which is right there in the background, Proxima Centauri. Proxima Centauri is uh, only about 4.2 light years away from Earth, and it's the nearest star to us. And it also has this beautiful planet around it, known as Proxima Centauri b, the closest exoplanet to us. So I wanted to use uh, this particular system as a kind of a prototype for this analysis. So let's begin when the star was just made. So here is Proxima Centauri when it's only approximately 100 million years old. And this is what it's going to look like pretty much for the next uh, maybe two or so trillion years. This star is going to live a very, very long life. But the only difference is that in the beginning, it's going to be a lot more active. You, you'll see a lot more uh, eruptions, a lot more flares, and during that time um, there's a very high chance that any planets like Proxima Centauri for example will uh, very likely be entirely stripped of any atmosphere and possibly also liquid water. So that's kind of the assumption today. But through uh, billions of years of evolution the star will actually kind of calm down and it will eventually stop uh, producing flares almost entirely. And it will then stay like this, completely calm and peaceful for uh, pretty much several hundred billion years. Now this is when we expect a lot of these planets that orbit these stars will most likely start forming uh, livable conditions and potentially the life around the universe will actually explode. So maybe just maybe there's not that much life in the universe just yet, but when these stars kind of come of age and become mature and wise and the planets around them have a, an opportunity for habitable conditions, liquid water and atmosphere, maybe that's when suddenly there will be a lot of extraterrestrial intelligence and basically aliens everywhere. But that's of course a speculation. So it will stay this way for um, about maybe two trillion years and then it will transform into this intermediate stage known as Blue Dwarf. And the only difference here is that uh, it's basically going to become a lot hotter and a lot more luminous. Its temperature will increase to about 7000 degrees Kelvin um, and it's going to stay this way for maybe about 5 billion years, which is actually the current age of our sun. So for some other red dwarfs, maybe this will be the period when planets that used to be on the outskirts and used to be very cold will now begin to uh, actually have livable conditions and normally 5 billion years, as we know from our own planet, is enough to establish life. So this could be the second sort of stage of evolution of life in the universe and in our galaxy. And um, in this particular case, Proxima b, assuming that it's in the same sort of um, area, will most likely become barren and lose all of its 
water and atmosphere if it had any because it's going to be burned by Proxima Centauri. Now following the blue dwarf stage it's actually going to start cooling down again um, and at some point we'll transition into the third stage uh, very similar to our own sun it will actually become a white dwarf. Now, just to give you a comparison of size, uh, here is Sirius B, the closest white dwarf to us, next to Proxima Centauri. So it's going to become a relatively small body, but also a relatively dense body. In other words, it's going to condense into a size of, um, well, very similar to Earth. It's going to be maybe about uh, six, 7,000 kilometers in radius. So let's do this manually by changing its size. And here you go. This is Proxima Centauri as a white dwarf. Now, um, a typical white dwarf is essentially the star's core, its middle part. And um, it usually contains a lot of oxygen and a lot of carbon. Uh, depending on the star, it will actually have different uh, combination of carbon to oxygen. And it will eventually start cooling down. But it will actually stay this way for a very, very long time, for trillions and trillions of years. Um, at some point, this particular star will actually start to crystallize and cool down and basically become like a massive diamond. Um, so most red dwarfs will go through the stage of white dwarf uh, crystallization. Our sun will actually also become a white dwarf, but through a slightly different mechanism. It, it essentially will actually expel its outer shell, whereas um, most red dwarfs just kind of transition into the stage without expelling anything. And as the temperature cools down, and as basically the star changes um, in its composition and becomes more crystallized, eventually it reaches the stage uh, that is going to become known as the last stage, the Black Dwarf stage. So now we're just going to change this to Black Dwarf. Now at this point, the entire object is essentially solid. It's crystal. And um, for the most part, many of these objects will re remain this way forever. And it's interesting that in this sort of condition, in this stage, um, these objects are very, very like similar to planets. They are very planetary. They have relatively thin, but very high in pressure atmosphere. They have uh, layers of material. They're extremely dense though. And also trying to land or take off from this particular object is going to be ridiculously hard because the surface gravity on this object is close to about 9,000 times the surface gravity on Earth. Basically standing here means that you will break every single bone in your body and you will then kind of get turned into a pancake. Uh, nevertheless though, um, there is a chance that while these objects are relatively warm, specifically while their temperature is relatively similar to the temperature on Earth, I'll just say about 300 degrees Kelvin, they may have really interesting conditions, including, of course, liquid water, because there will be actual material necessary for liquid water. And they will stay this way for trillions of years. And so a new type of insane, unusual life might actually form on these very, very strange, very unusual objects, trillions and trillions of years in the future. Now, we don't really have any black dwarfs in the universe just yet, because our universe is really young. And we don't even have that many white dwarfs. Uh, we definitely don't have any blue dwarfs either. So all of this is based on mathematical analysis and sort of the predictions of how tr stars transform. But we're almost certain that this is kind of how it happens. In other words, just to summarize everything, all of this starts with the red dwarf. This will last for up to about two to three trillion years. It will then become a blue dwarf. And this will usually be a period of about five billion years, maybe less. Then this uh, will become a white dwarf and will last for trillions of years as well. And finally, black dwarf, which will remain for the rest of eternity until the universe disappears or gets destroyed by some unusual event. So this is, or these are the four stages of a typical red dwarf. And this is how the most common star in the universe will progress throughout time. Hopefully you learned something from this video and now you know a little bit more about space our universe, and of course, Red Dwarfs. If you enjoyed these videos, and if you want to learn more about space, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell button to be notified about next videos. Also, consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help a lot. But most importantly, come back tomorrow to learn something else about space you may have not known before, and space out, and as always, bye-bye.